questions. I think the first one will be pretty quick for you to respond to. Um, so the first question is basically, can you walk through for us why your committee will provide the American public more of a narrative and a more detailed assessment of the work, the organization? First area is, that's probably been discussed the most, is the privacy area. And you know, Europe's already got GDPR, California's got a GDPR bill. There are you know, members, including me and others, who are working on privacy legislation. That's bucket number one. Bucket number two is um, questions around identity. Um, you know, I, I think there's increasing concern that you know, if we may have to move towards identity validation. That's a radical step. I'm not sure I'm prepared to go there. Estonia, for example, has already gone there. You can't get on the, the web without some independent identity validator in Estonia because there's so much Russian interference. But there may be things short of full identity validation. You know, I think it, most Americans would agree. We probably have a law that says you ought to have the right to know whether you're being talked to by a human being versus a bot. No, it just doesn't mean to get rid of the bot, but it does say. Now, that's easy to say. It's hard to implement. We ought to maybe have an indication that says if Linda is posting from D.C., but all her posts originate from Minsk or St. Petersburg, maybe there ought to be some geo indicator that would make somebody say, hey, well, maybe this is not the Linda in D.C. And the third thing is, and this is, again, I'm not fully there yet. But a lot of people who are smarter than me in this area have gone through the question around actual identity validation. You know, if, if you had to own the hate speech that pops up on the web and you had to put your real identity there, uh, it, it's worthy of debate. That's uh, bucket number two. Bucket number three is the whole question around content, the so-called Section 230 exemption. You know, in the late 90s, we basically called these companies, the social media companies, um, telephone companies in effect, almost common carriers. So they have no responsibility for the content. And maybe that made sense in the 90s. But you guys got to be pretty upset around this table, I imagine, when 65% of Americans get all their news from Facebook and Google, and they have none of the liability responses that all of you have to operate on. Other organizations besides the NRA? You know, I think we ought to have the ability. When people say, oh, Facebook and Google are free, no, they're not free. They are giant sucking sounds of information taking about us. If you're concerned about your privacy, I can assure you Facebook and Google knows more about you than the FBI and the CIA. So there ought to be that data. We should know what data they have on us. Give me one more minute. Okay. And then we ought to be able to have, we ought to import some of the old ideas that you know, some of us are old enough to around the table to remember when it used to be hard to move from one telco to another. Yeah. We then had number portability. We need data portability. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick up and move all your stuff from Facebook, including your cat videos, you got to be able to do that easily. And finally, you got to also have the ability to know what that data is worth, the data valuation. That's something that Holy Grail, they don't want to give up. But I think we ought to have that right. And then, you know, I increasingly worry if you look, for example, at what Facebook is doing, and I met with the Facebook leadership this week, and in certain areas they want to work with us, certain areas we're going to have, you know, we're going to have challenges. But this whole privacy pivot, where you can have one that could talk to a large group, thousands, I think uh, I have real concerns about, not just from law enforcement and the intelligence community, but if you look, you know, WhatsApp is already encrypted one into the other, but if you look at how WhatsApp has been used in countries like India and Brazil to spread hate speech or to you know, put out fake news saying to a Hindu community, you know, these bunch of Muslims out there killing cows, which has then sparked sectarian violence, I'm afraid that they may be using this as a way to avoid responsibility. So I think this is needs serious look, serious work now, because once the cat's out of the bag, it's tough. Sorry, the, the long answer. Okay, no problem. We've got a few more. Um